YouTube world. Hello, kid. I'm ready. I mean, hello, 2023. It's been 365 days, and we have yet until another year closer to future. <laughs> While the whole world chanted, <laughs> the New Year's probably had some opposite emotions for the Pokefan community, as they say, "You have the greatest days." And you also suffer the worst days. You now probably know why the title of my video now. This is a big example because the last time I created a Pokemon Theories video, that was the best. Uh, that was the best according to me. And now this one, the very next one, is probably the darkest. In the November of 2022, Ash Ketchum finally achieved a dream of becoming the strongest trainer ever, winning the Masters 8. And I've created a whole separate video for that, giving my reviews and all of that. And if you want to check out, the link is in the description box. The whole Pokefan community had gone bonkers. But just a month later, the Pokefan community would receive the darkest news ever. Yes, Ash Ketchum has officially been retired from the anime. He would not be the main face in the Scarlet and Violet anime. So after 25 or 26 years or whatever you like to call it 1300 plus episodes ash i know yeah he's still a 10 year old boy even i'm older than him ash's journey reaches its end he leaves the stage as the world's strongest trainer ever so i'm gonna cover a variety of topics in this video here's the list first of first of all the palti and abrigen updates the Scarlet and Violet Saga has been the talk in 2022 regarding Pokemon after the Pokemon Journey Saga and the Masters 8. Scarlet and Violet games were released on 18th of November 2022. We had been introduced to the legendary Pokemon, we had been introduced to the Elite Four, the champions of this region and even the starter Pokemon. And Koraidon, who is a Scarlet legend, the Fighting or Dragon type with a 670 base stat and the Violet's uh, legend is Miraldon, an electric and dragon type, again with a 670 base stats. The elite 4 members are Rika, who is a ground type specialist, Poppy, who is a steel type specialist, Larry, who is a normal and flying type specialist, and Hazel, who is a dragon type specialist, and ultimately the two champions of the Paldian region, who is Gita and Nimona, who, do, who have a different set of Pokemon, they don't specialize in one particular set. The Paldian starters were introduced both in the games and anime. In fact, there are multiple episode previews revolving Team Rocket, trying to catch all the three starters and as usual... Yes, and blasting off. The starters are Spirigado, who is a grass-type starter, Fukeko, who is a fire-type starter, and Quaxly, who is a water-type starter. If I had the option, I would personally choose Fukeko, because I have because I have a certain love for fire types. One, because red represents fire, fire reflects passion. Two, my channel signature color is a red one. Three, most of Ash's fully evolved strongest charters are for all fire types. Stat wise and game wise, it's a tight contest because their fully evolved forms changes their type to a dual one. Sprigado's final form is uh, Meow's Karado, who is a grass and dark type. Fukeko's final form is Skeletridge, who is a fire and ghost type. And Quaxley's final form is Quadavel, who is a water and fighting type. Spirigado, in my view, Spirigado is based on a grass type Litten. Fukeko is just a fire type Totodile. And Quaxley is just like. Uh... The final episodes and the release date. So as the journey series is behind us now, Ash is a world champion, Go seemingly caught Mew in his hand, the Project Mew arc has also ended, Chloe also becomes a researcher, Ash, Go and Chloe all head to their separate ways. And now it's time for another new adventure, the anime is not ending but Ash's journey hits the end of the road. With the announcement of a short special series aimed to be a Pokemon master, it's an 11 episode spin-off. The final 11 episodes featuring Ash and Pikachu. It will be all about Ash's journey from someone who just woke up late on his 10th birthday to being a world champion decades later. This is a fitting farewell to the most iconic duo and it shows how much we have grown as a Poké fan too. 20 years ago, in 2003, when I first saw a glimpse of Ash and Pokémon on my small TV, 
how much I've been loving the anime even after two decades alongside millions of shows. I'll definitely miss this too. 2023. The one final dance until April when the Scarlet and Violet anime will begin airing. With two new protagonists here, a girl with a spirigato and a boy with a fit of footage for Keiko and Quaxley. Their names are Liko and Roy. I'm also curious to know as to how this anime will fare without its iconic face. The aim to be a Pokemon master coinciding with the same title song celebrating 20 years of Pokemon, it will be released on 13th of January 2023 and as an 11-episode series, uh, as Pokemon episode 1 Pokemon episode is released every week, we might see it end in the late March or early April. And I'm damn sure, I bet my money not on my horses. But I'm in a prediction that the 11th and final episode will crash into internet. It definitely will. Maybe it will have the original theme song at the end, the Misty Goodbye theme, the Misty Goodbye song, or maybe the movie Last the Father finally for the final time. Maybe. And now the biggest topic of this video is the perfect time to quit Ash's character. This is a bit of debate but I think that this is the perfect time to quit Ash's character and the only time the writers actually had a good reason to do so. And before you go Super Saiyan, just a minute, listen to my whole point, this is just a piece of cake. As Ash is officially the strongest trainer now ever, more powerful than gym leaders, more powerful than league winners and maybe even at the same level of elite trainers. It is the wisest thing to quit at someone's peak. Everyone wants a high in the twilight. Imagine if Ash being a world champion resets his journey in Paldia, battling gyms again, worse, losing to any random trainer. You know like a level 5 Snivy. It just tends his reputation. In fact, he's already had it. Uh, whenever you see Pikachu defeated a super powerful Dragonite back in the Orange Islands and a few episodes later lost to an unevolved Eevee. Pikachu defeated Rage-Eyes, a legendary Rage-Eyes, and in just a few episodes later, in the new series, tied with an Alic and Evolved Alicid. Pikachu tied with Latios and the infamous Snivy went to follow up. Ash in Sinnoh to Ash in Unova, that's the biggest example. It was itself a huge minus in the anime. It might be harsh, but the writers probably weren't left with too many options. They could have had a Project Mew 2.0 or a Treasure Hunt light game, but let's face it. Our 10 year old pilot boy is meant for battles, battles and just battles, and leaks. He could have had a similar Galar journey in Paldia, but now he's the champion, he doesn't need to prove anything more. I mean, it was a speculation what was next for Ash, and for once, I hate you articles. An April Fools in December, unacceptable, I hate you Hiroka, you befold us man. So anyways, screw the hate, these are my reasons Satoshi leaving the anime as the greatest trainer ever, it's a fitting end and I'm just ready for the final chapter spin off. And now the fourth topic, the nostalgic lane. Just a quick recap of some nostalgia. We had a plenty of human characters coming back, whether it was his companions, whether it was his rivals, whether it was even small characters, a lot of callbacks. I also love how the last battle of Ash's career finished with the first ever theme song of Pokemon playing in the background of the Japanese version. The very first episode of the Pokemon series began with Ash and Pikachu seeing a Ho-Oh and 25 years later, in the last official episode of Pokemon, they again see a Ho-Oh. So this Ho-Oh has a definite relation with Ash. Second, I just love in the Journeys episode 135, Ash remembers all his uh, released Pokemons. In fact, he even meets his first ever caught Pokemon Butterfree after 25 years. Wish we had a shot of Prime and Pidgeot. Maybe they'll make appearances in these 11 episodes, you know? We cannot pre conclude anything before it concludes. Lastly, in Journey's episode 136, it, end it ends with a to be continued just like old times. Good job, writers, I love you.
just to add uh, there was a short series here just after the journeys uh, official episodes were completed and i kind of loved ash's artwork in this series the blue distant sky and even though it's from an alternate universe it still felt like worth to watch considering the situation of <clears throat> what about this trio are they gonna be in paldia too and i speculate the answer is yes and no both this is just pure speculation answer first of all yes because we saw in the previews how team rocket were already in paldia failing to catch the starters but we still don't have an official confirmation unlike ash's departure and no because when ash's character has been in the no because i think uh, team rocket following any other protagonist to catch would not be that interesting team rocket's target was ash's pikachu all the time and i don't think they would change their mind to go on chasing some other protagonist and i think it's better to end team rocket's uh, character as well if you're gonna end the protagonist's character you gotta end the villain's character too at the same time it would be wise this is just my idea it's time to leave have a good better best day and thank you satoshi and pikachu it's not officially over yet but the end is soon thank you for thank you for being the mascots of my favorite anime fitting in to the two protagonists uh, fitting in to the mascots of this anime